Welcome to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest trending news. If this is your first time, you're definitely invited to hit that subscribe and that notification bell. That way you get all the info as soon as it drops. Cameron calls out Jay-Z after the NFL snubs Lil Wayne for Kendrick Lamar at the Super Bowl 50 Nolia. That's right, Super Bowl 59, but I'ma call it Super Bowl 50 Nolia since it's in New Orleans, as we all know. Let's dive into the conversation. Your boy from It Is What It Is with Cameron and Mace. Cameron is saying that he doesn't think Kendrick Lamar should be the headliner. Cameron thinks the NFL should have chosen Lil Wayne to headline Super Bowl 50 Nolia. Considering, as I said, the game is being held in the historic New Orleans. He shared his take on Kendrick Lamar serving as the headline during an episode of It Is What It Is. After the league made the announcement on Sunday, he began clarifying he is a fan of Lamar and means no disrespect before going at Jay-Z's neck. I love Kendrick Lamar. I love the pop-out cam started. I think he's one of the top artists of this generation, period. Hate the selection, though. Man, it's in New Orleans and you don't get Lil Wayne, man, that's what you doing? Not just Hot Boys, Cash Money, all the songs Lil Wayne has done. There's no reason why Lil Wayne should not be performing at the Super Bowl, period. From there, Cam further accused Chica Jay-Z of being the person responsible for stopping Wayne from performing. It's really not a secret. Lil Wayne had a problem with somebody who's kind of part of the organization running it. This is payback, he stated. After Mace chimed in to note Wayne and Drake's connection, Cam added. Bro, it's ridiculous. Lil Wayne not performing in New Orleans for the Super Bowl is crazy. It's got to stop. Jay-Z and Rock Nation are serving as strategic entertainment advisors for the performance. In a statement of his own, Jay praised Lamar for his artistic vision and said his impact will be felt for years to come. Rap Geek. Hey man, this is a sticky situation here. Cameron is speaking his heart. But Cameron and Mace are doing commentary, member for the NFL now. Could this conversation and what he said and the accusations that he made against Jay-Z put that job in jeopardy? Hey, stay tuned, but check it out. We're going to check out what Cam had to say up close and personal right now. Let's take a listen. Listen, I love Kendrick Lamar. I love the pop-up. I think he's one of the top artists of this generation, period. Hate this election. It's in New Orleans. You don't get Lil Wayne. You That's what we doing? Yeah. Listen, yeah. you don't get Lil Wayne in New Orleans for the hot Super Bowl. Boys. Not just Hot Boys, Cash Money. All the songs Lil Wayne's done, whether it's Blink-182, there's no reason why Lil Wayne should not be performing the Super Bowl. It's one person who's stopping this. I know, you know, it's not really, it's not really a secret. Little Wayne had a problem with somebody before who's kind of part of the organization running it. This is payback. Who's that? Who's Little Wayne artist? Drake. Yeah, that not, is, this is this hating at this, this age is it, crazy. It's crazy, yeah. bro. It, bro. Bro, it's ridiculous. Like, Mike, Mike, this Mike, Mike, there's some hip hop shit that you probably don't know what's going on, to be totally honest with you. Yeah. So, we'll school you behind the scenes. Little Wayne, no, not to be performing in New Orleans for the Super Bowl, is egregious. And it gotta stop. I can do it, it gotta stop. Mike Bills will tell you what's going on later. It gotta stop, bro. It gotta stop, man. Yeah, and I'm it, doubling I down on that. Switch. Hating at this age is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. I love Lil Wayne. Both it's wild, that, bro. Man. I work and, for and, Lil Wayne. I love him. Great dude. Great yeah, dude. And, no, great and this dude, has nothing man. towards Kendrick. Kendrick. If anybody deserved it, Kendrick would deserve yeah. it. But there's some right, backstory right, shit you. going on. Yeah. While Lil Wayne is not performing the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> right. Good. Right, I can dig it. Yeah, that's sad. That's that's so that's so sad. Yeah, that's like really sad. Like, come on, my nigga, for real, bro. You're it, that insecure, man. Like, come on, it's crazy. Hey, man, all I can say about that situation is it is what it is. And we're on to the next story. 
Hurricane Chris reignites 50 Cent feud during heated debate with DJ Vlad. Let's dive in. Hey, Hurricane Chris says he's a better rapper than 50 Cent and can put together a much better performance than him in Shreveport, Louisiana. He shared his hot take during an interview with DJ Vlad published over the weekend. It comes shortly after he and 50 Pennies feuded over the Humor and Harmony Festival earlier this year in Shreveport, Louisiana. 50 Cent cannot outrap me. You don't make better music than me right now, he said. But, but hey, when Vlad referenced Get Rich or Die Trying and labeled it a classic, Chris admitted it was a great project, but didn't move from his stance. Song making, he don't make better songs than me, he countered. Make a song right now, and I make a song right now, I'ma smash that ish. I make way better music than 50 Cent. I know this for a fact. On this episode of The Mad Rapper, we've got hey, 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 Hurricane Chris. From there, Chris brought up the idea of performing in Shreveport. If we were to perform in Shreveport... Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks. I perform way longer than 50 Cent, and I would rock that ish way harder than 50 or anybody who effing came to Shreveport because I go back since I was 15 years old in high school, he said. Chris recently feuded with 50 pennies over his Humor and Harmony Festival, which again took place in Shreveport, Louisiana. The Mad Rapper, hey, allegedly, Chris was upset that 50 didn't platform enough local artists despite using his hometown with no connection to it. In turn, he labeled him a culture vulture. Come on, man, that ain't fair. Come on, there's some vultures out there, but this ain't one of them. All right, he's back again, the mad rapper. Hurricane Chris really speaks his mind on 50 Cent, but 50 Cent eventually, as always, fired back. Pew, 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 suggesting that a hey, baby. Hey, rapper, it's a one-hit wonder. Hey, that's what Fifth said, sparking a back and forth on social media. Eventually, Chris admitted that the two of them were done beefing. I know it sounds crazy. It's like, well, why are you arguing? Then y'all not beefing no more. Let's take a listen to what Chris really had to say. The Mad Rapper speaks. Uh, 50 Open G in the studios, right in Shreveport. 956,000 square feet. Right. which makes it the second largest black-owned production studio in America behind Tyler Perry Studios. Right. He also became the second biggest property owner in downtown Street. Right. So he's pumping a lot of money and a lot of resources and a lot of opportunity into the city. That's fine. Nobody can deny that. Yeah, nobody gonna deny nobody that. Nobody can deny like, that. We appreciate that because yeah. the city always needed help from people with big resources. Um, and we need help from more people with big resources. Like, I'm gonna continue to try to reach out to get more people to help us as well. Like, everybody can't, one person ain't gonna be able to do it by themselves. It's a real problem there, and, and it's gonna take a lot of people coming together to solve it. Right, so he opens up this huge studio, he buys a bunch of land, and he throws, I mean, was this the biggest event in Shreveport in recent history? I, mean, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I do you know. remember an event bigger than this? I didn't go. I well, didn't go to the event. But you, you heard about it. You, you saw how, you know, from the outside looking in. It would be hard for me to say because okay. I've been to some pretty nice size events okay. in Shreveport so over he, the past. He, but he does throw this huge event there. I know it was spectacular. Yeah. It could have possibly been one of the biggest events. I wouldn't be surprised if it right. was. And with that came a lot of employment both directly. Yeah, I got cousins that did security for the event. Dude, security, half a million dollars got spent on, on police. police. Yeah. And I remember Tony Yeo made a point of that because that was one of the things that you mentioned. You know, you said, uh, you know, how are you going to put uh, no Louisiana legends but spend half a million on police security? With the police security, there were no violent incidents the entire time, which from what I understand was actually you know, even without the event, you do have some violence that happens in Shreveport, randomly. But in this event, there was no violence for multiple days, right. which was great. Right. Because if someone got shot, it'd be like, oh, look, yeah, and I'm you know, all these rappers right. coming in and they're shooting each other. I no. totally understand that. So, so spending yeah. half a million, I thought was very well spent, considering the star power that was there. Right? I understand that. But my thing was, 
You spent a half a million with the police uh -huh. in your city. You spent another big bag with a lot of celebrities in your city. Throw some of the artists from your city a bag too to perform. Put like you understand what I'm saying? Like this is your city now. You saying this? You are you a part of this? You know what I'm saying? So that's all I was saying. Like I wasn't really mad about the police shit and nothing like that. Like I'm glad it was a safe event. Yeah. Spend a million on it if that's what keep it safe. Yeah. Only thing I and, and to keep it honest, the real thing that pissed me off was the ain't no more ratchet in my city shit. So everything that came after that, I'm just was steamrolling. <laughs> like. That shit had built up. You gotta think, I'm getting up and I'm watching where somebody posting on the news, 50 Cent Council's Ratchet City. What the first, the first name of my, my first album was called Ratchet. My partners who dead, named Ratchet Life. Like, and was one of the biggest artists in Shreveport before he died, you understand? Hey man, your boy makes a little bit of sense there because you know sometimes when you're angry, you're not as rational as you are when you calm down. And sometimes you gotta learn how to decipher through a message. It's not about if somebody's cursing, screaming, or hollering, it's a message in there. So sometimes you gotta interpret and look around how the message is delivered. But we're on to the next story. Diddy has reported he listed his mansion in Beverly Hills for a sale at a price point of $61 million. Page Six reports that the move comes as no surprise to insiders, despite the recent controversy surrounding the hip hop mogul. According to a source, Homeland Security infamously raided the home earlier this year as a part of the federal investigation into the bad boy mogul. Rap geek. The raid never led to any charges. Another source for the outlet explained the decision to sell. Combs established his primary residence on Star Island in Miami years ago. Now that his children are grown, the empty nester has decided to sell the property, marking a significant moment in LA real estate. Notably, Homeland Security also raided the Miami property simultaneously as they did his West Coast home. Do -do 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 -do. The LA property is located on what is known as Billionaire's Row and boasts several celebrity neighborhoods, including Kylie Jenner, Jimmy Iovine, Alexandra Von Furstenberg, and more in addition to the Playboy Mansion. Diddy originally purchased the property a decade ago for $40 million, built on 1.3 acres of land. The home encompasses 13,000 square feet of living space. A description of the home caught by page six reads, a grand cobblestone driveway leads to a completely remodeled estate, which features European design elements. The property boasts a luxurious paneled entry foyer with a sweeping staircase bathed in natural light, along with a large living room, formal dining room, a wine cellar, an office, and a gourmet kitchen with a family room and a separate kitchen. There are also apparently tons of amenities, including a state-of-the-art theater, a two-story guest house, and more. But be on the lookout for further updates on Diddy and the Homeland Security. And we're on to the next story. Rajanae Carter stirs the pot further amid Lil Wayne, Kendrick Lamar Super Bowl debate. Yo boy, let's dive in. Wayne's oldest and only daughter speaks out for her father. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks. There continues to be a lot of arm wrestling over who deserves this upcoming Super Bowl halftime show performance more. Rap Geek with the 59th game being in New Orleans, Louisiana for the 11th time, third this century. Fans of Wheezy are furious and want answers as to why he got robbed once again. In fact, the fans got robbed. Even other artists in hip hop are hoping that Kendrick Lamar will do everyone a favor and bring out Lil Wayne. But however, there are still quite a lot of big names backing the kid from Compton. Kendrick Lamar is truly a once in a generation artist and performer, Jay-Z said. His deep love for hip hop and culture informs his artistic vision. He has an unparalleled ability to define and influence culture globally. 
Kendrick's work and his impact will be felt for years to come. Overall, Hove makes a lot of great points, and with the year that he's having and the potential for a new album coming soon, it's a pretty safe and reasonable pick. But however, this is not going to stop the Wayne supporters from dubbing this as a massive injustice. Imagine when the Super Bowl was in LA, right? Rap geek. Imagine if Dr. Dre and Snoop didn't perform and they brought out Lil Wayne and Cash Money. Man, they would have tore LA up. But yeah, let's dive back in. Perhaps the MC's biggest fan, eldest child, and only daughter, Ray Janae Carter, certainly feels some type of way. In a vague and timely tweet, the model and entrepreneur simply stated, they envy greatness. Not too many people in the neighborhood talk comment section are feeling this response to her father not being selected. Instead, it's gotten her tons of backlash from fans of Kendrick Lamar. The Kendrick hate is hilarious, dog. That man is an artist in every way possible. The Super Bowl has been in Louisiana 10 times. Why didn't y'all call for Lil Wayne in any of those other games? Because y'all hating on Kendrick and Newsflash, they don't pick the artists in connection with where the game is played. Dr. Dre and Snoop was a special case. Yeah, okay, if they wouldn't have been performing, what you think would have happened in LA if the Super Bowl came to LA and Dr. Dre and Snoop didn't grace the stage? Yeah, yeah, right, I'll wait. I'm sure this is just business, but imagine this. If there was a football team in Brooklyn and the Super Bowl came to Brooklyn, who would perform? Yeah, y'all know who to be jigga jigga There's a good chance that this debate continues for a long, long time. Shannon Sharp addresses his recent viral outburst and heated exchange with Ocho Cinco. Ocho means eight, Cinco means five, as we all know. Shannon had good reason for it all, but let's dive into the conversation and see. Shannon Sharp was hosting his popular show Nightcap the other night when he was experiencing some audio issues. This led to an outburst that made it seem like he was mad at his production crew. Ah. Moreover, he reamed out Chad Ochocinco who showed up late to the broadcast. This led to quite a bit of discourse on social media. Sharp decided to not give in to any of it. On Sunday night, Sharp explained what happened and noted that it had nothing to do with his team. So that's what I was hearing play back in my ear. It wasn't like a malfunction. Somehow, the audio had clicked on on the video that was playing, Sharp explained. So I could hear that back in my ear. So that was nothing that people back in the studio was doing, he continued. That was no fault of their own. That was just something that had just all of a sudden happened. It was like a ghost was in the building. And it, and it just took us a minute to figure it out. As for the riff with Ocho, some felt as though Sharp was playing him like Skip Bayless. Sharp went on to say that he and Ocho have a great, great, great deal of respect for one another. And at the end of the day, Sharp just wants to push Ocho to be the best version of himself so that the show can put out the best possible product. Rap Geek, subscribe, hit that notification bell, thanks. And then guys, look, there's been a lot said. You trying to do the Ocho what Skip did to you. <laughs> Shannon said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna drag Ocho Cinco to a level that he didn't think he could get to. Just like football. Hey, I'm a leader and I'm here to lead. Come on, boy, let's get in these trenches and get this wood. According to DJ Academics, Drake actually agrees with Kendrick Lamar's recent statement that there are no round two. Now that Kendrick Lamar has announced his Super Bowl halftime show, many fans are wondering what Drake really meant with his game two teases. For those unaware, Kendrick seemed to call out the boys' hints towards another round by proclaiming that there's only one shot at winning a championship. But fans didn't really know how to interpret this IG burner tease from the six guy, which consisted of Rasheed Wallace saying that the Pistons will definitely win game two. They went on to win the series. And DG Academics is the latest person to suggest that this supposed victory in the long run is what he's trying to refer to here. Game two has nothing to do with running back the rap battle between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Rap geek. 
DJ Academics tweeted, people advocating for this game too are concerned more with sales, commercial performance, and industry dominance than actual rap battles and beef. Folks are rallying against Jay-Z now and have this rich man versus rich man approach as they pick their favorite capitalists to pettily use the industry to one-up each other through. And while Kendrick Lamar is performing at the Super Bowl, Rap D. Drizzy is one of the ambassadors for the FIFA World Cup in 2026, which will take place across North America. So what do you care about in hip hop? The money or the music? That's the question that people are asking. For game two, we will win. DJ Academics had previously shared. Rap Geek. Game two, we will win. That's a fact. And if you think Drake finna abandon or forsake all of them fans, you gotta realize this is for the fans right here. You think he gonna let some PA ninja have something over him? Have something over his legacy and his fans? No. Hey, Jack, F that. This the new thing, Drake in five, Drake in five, people I said, Drake in five, remember I told you that, we ain't doing six, five, what's understood, need not be explained, y'all are gonna watch it, listen, we gotta see where the game starts, we gotta see bro, just watch game two, just watch game two bro, just watch game two. What you won't hear from OVO fans though, is that they want any excuse for Drake to beat Kendrick Lamar. Whereas Kendrick Lamar fans have all the proof they wanted. At least both sides mostly agree that Lil Wayne should have had the headlining slot instead. And that goes for every other New Orleans Super Bowl regardless. But we'll see how all this continues to develop. Russell Simmons is not letting up in his lawsuit against his ex-wife, Kamora Lee, putting a lot of pressure on her and her team. But moreover, he recently motioned a demand for her to reveal Rap Geek private text message information and appear in federal court for a deposition. For those of you who are unaware, the disgraced music mogul sued Lee for allegedly using his shares that he had a stake in to bail her ex-husband, Tim Laysner. Oh yeah, he lacing her, all right. Tim is showing up lacing her. He getting the stocks, the money, the exchange, and everything. Get me up out of here and get me some. Oh boy, hey, this is deep. As such, he claims that the tax between the former couple as well as between her and her financial advisors will prove this case. Overall, it's a contentious and combative situation. Yeah! Hey, as we all know, it's two sides to every story, right? Yeah! All right, thanks for joining us on the episode of Who's Lying First? In this corner, we've got Russell Simmons. And in this other corner, we've got Kamora Lee Simmons, his ex-wife, who's allegedly been stealing money to bail out her ex. I guess that ex was dropping that. Yeah, allegedly. But yeah, let's dive into this one. On the other hand, Kamora Lee Simmons denies Russell's claims, alleging she already proved she owns these shares. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, Rap Geek, through legal document provisions. In addition, her attorney characterized his request and demands as excessive and irrelevant. According to a court report, while many folks have picked sides in this debacle between them, it's going 12 rounds. And it's crystal clear, this is much, much more complicated than we initially believed. How this demand for text message conversations will turn out. But we can imagine that this is far from over. This is far from the end of this part of the court case. It's going down. Elsewhere, Russell Simmons recently warned people who continue to attack his friends for supporting him amid his many sexual assault accusations. I have never spoken to a policeman about anything he shared on social media. I have never spoken to a judge, civil or criminal, about anything. From what I can tell, Joe Biden, Bill Clinton, 
President Trump all have more credible claims against them than I do. Knock it off. I love you. I just don't want my friends attacked though. I wish you all the best, but just leave my friends alone. Don't attack my friends for visiting me. I can have friends. Meanwhile, Kamora Lee recently spoke on her daughter with Russell Simmons age gap relationship. Yeah, she was dating Santa Claus. I don't think she had anything she told TMZ. I think that was just, she's a pretty young girl. And you know, I think that we think that the toads that we kiss are gonna be like broadcasted. I personally feel a little bit like she was set up. Which is why I try to teach the girls. Now you need to teach them to quit messing with them old ass mans and quit making excuses for them. That's what it sounds like to me. But hey, that's neither here nor there. And that's not my opinion. And that's not my daughter. And that's, that's not my business. But it looks like you're making excuses for your daughter dating Santa Claus. Yeah, but we're on to the next story. Rich homie Quan's father reveals what rapper was working on before he passed. Rich homie Quan had big things on the way, according to his father, Corey Lamar. Last week, Rich homie Quan's family confirmed that he had passed away at the age of 34 at his Atlanta home. The rapper's cause of death has yet to be confirmed. Heartbreaking audio from his girlfriend Amber Williams' 911 call reveals that she found him unresponsive on their couch. As fans and peers and loved ones continue to share their reactions to the tragic news, his father, Corey Lamar, has been very vocal as it made its rounds online. He took to his insta he took he took to his inst he took to his Instagram story to share a statement revealing how devastated he was by his son Quan's passing. Unbearable pain, he wrote. Lord, please, please, please. Help me understand this. To lose my son, my firstborn, my best friend, Lord, let this be a dream. Y'all pray for me and my family. I feel like I'm crushed into a million pieces. I need y'all right now. Now Lamar has sat down for an interview with Ain't You Malcolm, revealing new details about what his son Quan had in the works when he passed away. According to him, he had just finished a full-length project with various collaborations. Lamar also says he was about to get together with 2 Chains and Plies to film music videos. His father said that he has probably 2,000 unreleased songs he added. He has a real catalog. He has a ton of music that his fans deserve to hear. It remains unclear whether or not there are any plans to release the project or any of the other music Quan had in his vault. But what do you think about rich homie Quan's father revealing that he has over 2,000 unreleased songs that his fans would love and have yet to hear? But do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And thanks for stopping out. And we'll see you on the next video. Yeah. Yeah.